So what I want to talk about in particular is uh, the notion of blockchain and blockchain protocol. And, and, and blockchain, let, let me just first back up. Blockchain is the technology behind Bitcoin. So effectively, uh, Bitcoin was the first use case of blockchain technology. It's brand new software architecture, effectively. Uh, and so we have to talk about blockchain because there's unbelievable implications of blockchain. So let, let's dive into it. And, and this is, it's a tricky topic, and this, I don't have a long session. It's a relatively short session this evening, so I'm going to do my best to explain it. But, but this, is, this is right here. This is the most important part as far as that explanation goes. So blockchain is effectively just a distributed ledger. So imagine a ledger of transactions, just a ledger of transactions. But instead of having it in one place, you actually have it in dozens or hundreds or thousands of different places simultaneously. Okay? Each one of those places is called a node. Okay? So the, the same ledger exists in all of these different nodes, and it's a consensus-based system. So all these nodes have to agree that you've got the right ledger of transactions. That makes it extremely difficult to hack. Or you can't hack it. Because if you hack one node, you have to hack all the others at the same time in order for the change to actually take place. Right? It's very, very difficult to do. A lot of people would say it's impossible to do. And I might add that the Bitcoin blockchain has never successfully been hacked. A number of exchanges have been hacked. A number of wallets have been hacked. But the Bitcoin blockchain has never been hacked. And believe me, everybody has tried. Everybody has tried. Now, it gets even better. It gets even better. And listen to this sentence. Because every time a new block of transactions is added to the chain of previous blocks, hence the blockchain, okay, the latest block includes a summary of what was in the previous block. We call it a hash. Okay? That means that once it's on the blockchain, you can't change it after the fact because you would have to hack every successive block in order for it to take effect. And you'd have to do it on dozens, hundreds, or thousands of nodes at the same time. So you, you really can't do it. So effectively, what blockchain does is it automates trust. That's, that's the sentence you, I want. I really hope you remember that sentence. Blockchain automates trust. It's a software architecture that makes it almost impossible to hack and manipulate the data. What does that allow you to do? What does that allow you to do? That means you can transact business with people you don't trust and rely on the software architecture to guarantee it. Okay? So, how has it been used? I always, this is what I do for a living. I, I'm looking at use cases and case histories and success stories. Where's the private equity money going? Where's the venture capital money going? That's what I do every day. I love what I do. Guys, I'm a nerd and a geek. I love this stuff. I truly do. Okay, so last year, they, uh, the, the Wells Fargo Bank with Commonwealth Bank, they did a POC, a, a proof of concept, uh, where the, it involved 88 bales of cotton. And these 88 bales of cotton were shipped from Texas to China. Okay, uh, and, and again, just to, to, you know, make it clear, you have a producer of the cotton, you got a trucking company that takes it to the dock, you got a loading company that takes it on the ship, you got customs clearance, then you got the actual the boat itself that goes across. And then on the other side, you got another customs clearance, you got an offload, you got a trucking company, and then the, you know, the recipient. So a whole bunch of people involved. And when, once it got to China, uh, and the barcodes were scanned on the 88 bales of cotton, as soon as those barcodes were scanned, it automatically transferred title and authorized payment, automatically because it was all done on an Ethereum-based blockchain using what's called a smart contract. Okay. Now, what's a smart contract? <laughs> smart contract is basically just a contract that includes if-then statements. Okay. And, and by the way, there's nothing uh, unique to smart contracts on blockchain. There's a big debate about what, do we need to have something on a blockchain or can we just do it on a database? There's a lot of good reasons to just leave it on a database. Not everything needs to go on a blockchain. But by the bottom line, and we've had databases, of course, for decades. So they used to be called stored procedures. Same thing. Now they're called smart contracts. Exactly the same thing. But the bottom line is you can create a smart contract that has all the stipulations of the order, all these milestones along the way, 
and everything just ticks off automatically. So when you think about a smart contract, just think about wills and contracts that execute themselves, right? Just to, to have an idea of what that means. But this has had an unbelievable impact on the potential in the distribution sector, okay? Because, and here's where it gets interesting. So imagine the different parties in the transaction, right? You've got the, the 88 bales of cotton. A transaction like that could easily involve 30 different companies, certainly 20, right? And, and many times as many as 30 different companies. So just the, the, the basic categories of people involved, you've got obviously the supplier, you've got the customer, you've got regulators, you've got the distributors, you've got the banks, okay? Well, if everything's connected on a blockchain using smart contracts, then all those different parties are connected because they're the individual nodes on that private blockchain. Okay, you can have a public blockchain, you can have a private blockchain. So imagine your supply chain for the business that you're a part of. I'm sure everyone here has a business or probably many that you're involved with. All the, the players to the transactions, they're the individual nodes on the blockchain, which means it's consensus, right? So once you upload the smart contract for the latest order, Everyone has to agree that these are the terms. We all agree, everything's cool, right? After that, every one of those companies, they all have order takers, they have order trackers, project management. Uh, after the fact, you have audit, you have compliance. All of that effectively goes away. The whole thing's automatic. And if you use a cryptocurrency for payment, you can get rid of the bank altogether. <laughs> Imagine, imagine the implications. Now, it gets even more interesting because, like let's take Microsoft for example. Uh, I just did an event with Accenture on the Microsoft campus in Redmond, Washington. And they're, believe me, they are working on this at a furious pace. But if Microsoft deploys blockchain, Microsoft probably sells to every Fortune 500 company, probably. Right? If it deploys blockchain and every one of their customers becomes a node on a private blockchain for supply chain management, that one company deploys blockchain and it sweeps the entire Fortune 500 into a whole new paradigm of supply chain management. It's going to happen. Might not be Microsoft, might not be this week, next month, this year, next year. We don't know when it's going to deploy, but someone's going to do it. Someone's going to do it. And when that happens, the entire supply chain management process shifts with enormous efficiencies that are available. Right? Because the administrative functions can be, there's a lot of efficiencies, so you can take a lot of that administrative functions out. Now, it doesn't stop at supply chain management. There's all kinds of different use cases for a blockchain. If you have a, a system, a, a software architecture that guarantees or automates trust, then you can use that in product licensing, you can use that in digital identity, digital rights, right? You can use that in the G, uh, GDPR, which is the uh, General Pr uh, uh, Data Protection Regulation, which was adopted by the EU last year. It goes into, into effect this year. And of course, every global company is gonna use that GDPR framework for all of their data across the entire world because it just makes sense. If you're gonna do it in one place, you may as well do it system-wide. Uh, and you can use blockchain for elements of that. Now, with the EU in mind, remember I said, once something's on the blockchain, you can't take it off, remember? Once it's on the blockchain, you can't take it off. That represents a problem uh, with the new regulations in Europe uh, with regard to the right to be forgotten. The right to be forgotten, which means uh, you have to be able to take someone off of the network, which is a stumbling block. And I don't have an answer for that. I'm just mentioning it as, as an obstacle that they're, they're trying to figure out right now. How do we accommodate the right to be forgotten in a blockchain architecture? But the bottom line is, with all these use cases and many others, this is gonna sweep through the entire economy. This is gonna sweep through the entire, every industry sector is gonna be affected over a period of time with blockchain. So getting back to Microsoft, they just introduced their Cocoa framework uh, which is on the Azure platform. That's a, an enterprise scale blockchain solution. So they are aggressively going after this and that uh, Cocoa framework right now is, is uh, processing at a rate of 1600 transactions a second, which is quite low. For example, if you wanted to accommodate Visa, you'd have to be closer to 5 million transactions per second. 
uh, instead of 1600. So there's a latency problem. Uh, which makes sense. By the way, you go back to the, the, the comparison of a database versus blockchain, right? Well, you're always going to have higher performance on a database. It's in one place. So the performance is going to be much higher. Right? As soon as you go on a blockchain, you've got to update all these nodes every single time. It, ta it takes time, so there's latency issues. It's, it's hard to get, get it up to speed. It's going to improve. But I'm just, again, I'm trying to, I want to try and provide as much context as I can so you guys see the nuances of, of what the developers are trying to figure out. But there is a gold rush taking place. Uh, and there is a gold rush that we are going to continue to witness over the coming years because there is, the, the technology is truly revolutionary. 